Monarch the Legacy of Monsters, I think, is a red herring of a title in that who it's referring to the monsters as. Since Monarch is a part of Legendary's Monsterverse franchise, starring one King Kong and Godzilla, because as much as I love the radioactive lizard, I'm always Team Kong, it is natural to think that the term is referring to the Titans. However, given that the show explores the complex relationships across time and space of the Rhonda family, honoring inclusion of Lee Shaw, of course, I think Legacy of Monsters is actually referring to the family themselves rather than the Titans. And that is because that despite the era that they may be in, that anyone associated with the Rondas has a bad habit of becoming habitually obsessed with Titans in one form or another, and usually at the cost of their own family. And also, it makes them apparently habitually bad at relationships as well. So let's start with the literal mother of it all, Keiko, who is being so obsessed and bullheaded about her research that she becomes an absentee mom to her son Hiroshi. And for that work and effort, ends up surviving a fall and end up trapped in the alternate dimension of the Titans for what she thinks is only a few days, but it actually turns out to be 56 years. Literal decades have gone by, and the people she has left behind have either changed or died, all because she insisted upon putting her science first over safety, or at least other people to some degree or one or another. Then there we have the father of it all, if you will, Bill Ronda, whom we all know from the 2017 movie Kong, who also being obsessed with his work even before he meets Keiko, makes few friends and even fewer allies in his research. And that this only increases to the detriment of his now stepson Hiroshi, whom he ends up, ends up becoming estranged from while trying to avenge what he believes is the death of his wife and becomes considered to the scientific community at large to be a crackpot. For all this effort, he ends up dying on Skull Island, as we all know in the movie, in the belief that his longtime theories have been proven correct. And even though that they were, it still came at the cost of his own family. Then we have Lee Shaw, who for a long time doesn't show any signs like Keiko and Bill of this apparent Ronda curse, as it, if you will call it that until much later when he's helping their grandkids search for their father, Hiroshi. Though he seems to already have a plan and kind of know where they're going most of the time, he's the one driving the younger teammates on Team Ronda when they start to lack in their resolve. And when they do eventually part ways, albeit temporarily, in Algeria, he still continues his mission to close the portals in order to help Godzilla maintain the balance like Keiko and Bill had always believed, even making deals with defectors from Monarch and raiding Monarch outposts across the world to do it. Though of the Trinity, I do think he seems to have gotten the better end of the deal in that when he is either, I think anyway, left behind in Hollow Earth in the final episode of the series, or at least for the season, he ends up thanking Keiko for inspiring him and allowing him to finish his mission. So of the Trinity, he seems to be the one that has to have no regrets whatsoever. Speaking of Hiroshi though, having grown up with such bad examples as parents, he too does not escape the family curse, not only becoming obsessed with Titans to the point of being called a crackpot like his stepfather, but also fathering two families on two different continents whom he admits were never supposed to know about each other. Uh, according to him, he says he fell in love with both of them and couldn't bear to be one without the other, apparently. His daughter, Kate, is a traumatized survivor of G-Day, when Godzilla has his epic nuclear smackdown in the downtown LA, which itself took many lives as collateral damage. Yet, even before the battle, she was already cheating on her partner with another woman, and several times wants to abandon the quest to find her father or try to get to know her stepbrother, Kentaro. She clearly has abandonment issues. And, also speaking of Kentaro, though he seems to be the most well-adjusted of the most recent members of the Ronda clan, he too doesn't ex completely escape the curse in that he does have a failed relationship with Mei, whom herself also gets caught up in the Ronda curse as well. So, 
The monsters in Monarch Legacy of Monsters are not about the Titans, per se, but the Rana family and their similarly symbiotic relationship to the Titans, whether that's out of curiosity or trauma. It's a repeating cycle of abandonment over what the characters believed was the greater good or that they felt they just could not do for whatever reason. And all of this leads up to my favorite moment in the entire series and in the final episode as well, when Keiko is about to continue this curse, so to speak, about to remain behind in Hollow Wars because she feels she can't handle the massive time loss that she just found out about and start ruining other people's lives who she hasn't seen in 56 years. Only to then be called out by Kate, who finally calls out the family bullshit, saying that the Titans have taken everything from them, and that I think implies that the Ronas were somehow responsible for that, and that the curse, as she calls it correctly, ends with them at that moment. No more excuses, no more rationalizations. It was such a cathartic moment because I'm watching these characters stubbornly hurt each other over and over again, and other people as well either running from their demons or just because they don't realize what they're doing somehow. Keiko, though I like the character, especially given that she was always hell-bent and that while I don't deny her suffering from finding out that so much time has gone by and everything, I also felt that she finally needed to face the ramifications of her actions that no post-war racist military or sexist ideology had any part of. It was all her doing and hers alone. Every action causes an equal and opposite reaction. All that being said, I definitely hope there's a season two to further explore how the Rondas cope with this changing world that they're now in, having experienced yet another time dilation, having returned from the Hollow Earth and missed out on two years of their lives, and with the increasing presence of the Titans that is no longer an obscure obsessive curiosity, but now a global threat to the world as humanity knows it. But, having said that, what are your thoughts? Have you seen Monarch The Legacy of Monsters? And if you have, were your impressions the same? Or did you feel it was just about Godzilla and why the Titans were doing what they were doing across the Earth? Either way, let me know in the comments below, but this is the fictional Mindbender, and you guys have a good day.